It's feedback gaming back for another super video. Today we're going to be playing as China, and as always, regular difficulty, no Iron Man, and with historical AI focuses turned on. Super China, you're probably thinking, hang on a second. Feedback Game has already done a Super China. That's right, I have. It was a very brief video, and it was like an exploit of using Communist China to flip most of China, uh, well, unify most of China in a kind of cheesy way. I actually don't know if that still works. So if you want to check out my uh, Super videos and find out if that still works, give it a shot. So I guess this one, was that, oh, that one was Communist China. This one is regular China. The question is, how do you form Super China as regular China? Nationalist China. It isn't called Nationalist China in Hoi Fo, it's called China. Okay, first of all, you need to expand as quickly as possible. The Marco Polo event will bring Japanese into the war against you. And in that case, you need to be prepared way ahead of time. And to do that, first of all, we need to go for the three principles of the people and allow you to go anti-communism and subjugate the warlords. Both of these will let you expand super fast. So three principles is the way forward. Next thing you're going to do is make the most of your very little research. So, the smart thing to do would be to go for mass assault and get the defense in depth, which allows extra entrenchment and organization, which is really good for your infantry only army. And also pretty good is to get basic machine tools and concentrate industry, because you have really crummy industry. But we're not going to play this any differently today. We're going to play it very differently, and we're going to go for artillery, and we are going to go for. Tactical bombers. What? Tactical bombers? What are you thinking? Right, so what we're going to do is go for the war bombers. Tactical bombers tend to work out a lot better than close air support because they have significantly more range. Go the wrong way around. This is your CAS. It has a range of 700 kilometers, where the tactical bombers has 2,400 kilometers. The, the reason why tax is a better idea. Is because you have lack of range due to the fact that you've got limited airports in the game. Also, first of all, we are going to end up building our airport in this tile here. Why? Because this is very close to Communist China and we're going to be attacking them early on. And having the exit air coverage is going to go a long, long way. Also, we are going to build a lot of military factories too. In areas which have fiber infrastructure. So in this case, this, this tile and this tile. Probably thinking, oh my god, Dave, this is historically a tile that you would normally lose. What are you thinking? Crazy! We'll see in a second. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is select our entire army. And we are going to split them in half. And you find that you've got two nice even stacks of 24 if you split them in half. I think the best thing to do that I've found from experience is to kill off all the stragglers. As like so. Get yourself a nice field marshal. You've got two options. You've got yourself Du Yung Ming. He's our favourite because he's got four attack and he's also a defensive doctor, which works out quite well. Also, we're going to get two uh, generals. This one's pretty good. He's got five attack. And this guy's also pretty good because he's got four attack, which is always pretty good. And these are the guys that's going to go on this front line. For some bizarre reason, it's created a really narrow front line here, but then a longer one. So we're just going to correct that now. That's perfect. The easiest tile to take when you're attacking Kami China is the center one. Because you can attack from two angles. But the other ones, you struggle. Think about it, you can actually hit that one, but that one actually turns out a little bit more difficult, which will all be explained in due time. We're going to convert all these to the smallest division that they've got. This one. We are also going to exercise them all as well. We are going to aim for combat width of 10. We are going to try our absolute best to do as much damage with that as well. But into war bombers and rifles are the way forward. We're making a light cruiser, which will finish in God knows how long, but we're not going to finish that now. We're going to sort out all the air force is going to be positioned here when we have time. Make sure we put them on the appropriate missions for them. And here we go. Let's go, 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 go. The first tactical bomber is complete. So we're going to form an air wing with that. Uh, 50 air wing size will be ideal. And we put them on close air support. Okay, the first airport is complete. So we stick all of our planes on this one tile. A level one airport will be enough. We don't really have much of an air force anyway. Okay, so one of the issues we've got with um, China is you start off with incompetent officers which reduces your daily command power gain by 70%. That's actually quite big because you've got decent war support. So we need to get enough command power to give this general 
organization first, which gives an extra 2% reinforce rate. You wouldn't believe how much reinforce rate helps you in the early days of the war because you've not got a lot of time to react. That extra little bit of a tack incentive and ability to arrive on the front line just a little bit earlier goes a long way. Okay, we've got our first great organization first is a must now that our entire army is trained and it is at level 3 regular we can stop exercising them to get them into position now before I forget about this I am going to activate their plan to attack immediately I want them to do as much damage as possible and I'm going to put them on aggressive too you will see why very shortly okay artillery is finished we are going to work on uh, improve into our artillery though the extra 10% soft attack Definitely goes a long way because artillery is your backbone of your army anyway. We're going to make one row of that. Add those on immediately. Okay, we're going to prioritize the interior which gives extra stability and it gives us option to go to war with Commie China immediately. But one of the things you're probably thinking right now is how are you going to break through this? This is going to be a tricky way. You're going to go over a river. You are going to be attacking hills and mountains. And you are going to be attacking to an area that has bunkers as well. So it is going to be a really, really tricky one to break. But you'll see very shortly how it is done. So we need to prioritize as much attack power early on as possible and I wouldn't usually at this point go for partial mope. Usually is a smart choice. But I'm not a smart man so I am going to go for something really weird such as an infantry expert which gives an extra 10% attack. See why very shortly. Alright so our tactical bomber is complete now. That gives us a, an awesome amount of range for our attacks. So we lose all the production efficiency but it is what it is because we need those rock hard tactical bombers to get all the maximum efficiency in the air as possible. As I you, that will go a long way. Next, we are going to work on reinforce rate and go for radio. So electronic mechanical computing is the way forward. And uh, we actually got enough command power for more air crew. So we are going to do that. As you can see, we've gone from amber to green from our tacticals and red to amber for our fighters, depending on the weather. It's raining. Oh, and it's storm. And it's gone back. It's gone back to amber. Okay. Now we go to war. So this gives us a Cassus Belly, a war goal against Kami China and Xinjiang. Okay, so we have now into our artillery and we have radio access. So now we can start working on our industry. The so production efficiency cap is okay, but we need it to go for concentrate. And that's the, the sweet one. We want to try and produce as many guns as possible. Okay, we can now go to war with Commie China, and we are going to subjugate the warlord straight afterwards as well. So we are going to go to war immediately. And if you notice, the vast majority attacking into this tile. There's also a nice chunk to go there. So you're probably going to see now why reinforce rate is important. So if anyone doesn't understand reinforce rate, this is a little guide for you. The reinforce rate is the speed that divisions in reserve move to the front line. Once they're in reserve, they're dealing zero damage. Once they're in the actual fight they're up front they're dealing damage so in this circumstance these divisions here are basically doing nothing but the higher reinforce rate they have over two percent in this case two percent is the base means they'll get into combat quicker now, there are a few factors that can play into it one in this case the trait that i've added for this general radio is another one and another biggie is the speed of the division anything more than four kilometers per hour will increase the reinforce rate that's why going for motorized or tanks is usually a really good idea because it gets them into combat like so fast due to the fact that they move quickly oh blown my mind right and as you can see their mass assault as well as sun li zhen to young ming is also given an extra two percent due to his uh his trait on that yeah. so we are going to plow our way into the front line here as actually this is not very majestic it is literally me just shoving and bashing my head against the wall but as you see, this air control is making a big difference because we managed to bomb them. And the bombings are going to be what's going to crack them. If you hover over, it says 12 days. More than likely, it be less than that. Due to that's not to, that number is not taken into account as the bombings. We are getting quite a lot of XP here, which is useful because we are going to improve this division. To make it as rock solid as humanly possible. So we are going to do the right amount of damage. And you can see this guy is just about to break now. We've got one guy left and he has broken. And that is perfect. We are going to initially push directly on top of them here and we are going to move into these gaps here because we have to do our absolute very best to encircle their capital. It's probably a good thing. I say probably. It's like I haven't planned it this way. It is a good thing that we are grinding against their front lines in this case because we are gaining XP and combat XP plays a very important factor in how China's fascial focus tree works, which we'll talk more about a little later. And the capital has fallen, and more than likely that causes the death of Komi China. We can annex them immediately. We do have a Cassus Belly against Xinjiang as well, because they're communists as well. 
Uh, but you don't have to deal with that depending on if they get subjugated due to the warlords. So, from my personal experience of doing this several times, I have found there are certain states that are more or less likely, more or less likely to join you. I have noticed from experience, Xinyang is like a good 60-70% chance that they are going to join you. Where I found that the Guanzi click is the least likely. And, and it's kind of down the middle for the, the other three warlords, this one, this one, and this one. The Guanzi click is what we're going to go for next. We're going to move our troops over, get a nice juicy amount of planning bonus, make sure they're all railroading, move our air force over to help them as soon as we can. And the objective for this is when we declare war on them, we want to grab this airport as soon as possible so we can position ourselves in southern China's air zone, which is directly in the center, to give the maximum amount of air efficiency. So we're not going to worry about that because we don't connect borders with them, but we are going to work on that soon. Okay, we have cu currently 11 XP, so we're going to use this first of all to add artillery onto our divisions. And we have got a little bit of excess time here. We have a total an extra 40 days, so we're going to exercise our troops with the new artillery pieces. And that hopefully should get them prepared for the war. And as you see, we're only a few artillery pieces away from completely having enough equipment to sustain our entire army, which is good news. So now the hardest target has been destroyed, which was Commie China. Now we can worry more about our economy. I say worry, care about our economy. Take care of our economy. Look after our economy. Give the economy what it needs. And we're going to have a partial mobilization. At the moment, we get almost 15 factories, which we can use to build more military factories. The more mills you got early on, the better. Uh, I would never recommend making civil factories in a AI game of Hearts of Iron 4 for China. Multiplayer? Maybe. But I don't know the meta for that. So, Tell me in the comments below. Do you know the meta to uh, China in Hearts of Iron 4? Let me know. By the way, guys. Have I not said this already? Well, I'm going to say it now. If you would like to help me out, please like this video, guys. If you like super videos, please like this video. And also comment below with any other nations you'd like me to suggest to play as super videos for Hearts of Iron 4. So I'm going to click through all these really quickly and we can see really quickly who has said yes and who has said no. And it also the Glancy Click has said no, Xing Yang has said no, and uh, Shenix, Shinx, I can't even pronounce it, has said no. That is probably the worst turnout I've ever experienced, but it is what it is. But there are some weak targets though I can take out mighty quickly, so that's good news. And we are going to declare war you immediately. And I want you guys to capture that airport straight away. This is definitely the toughest not to crack. Due to the fact it's got the most divisions. And it has the most resources. So it can sustain a war for a long period. So we have to knock this one out as quickly as possible. And there we've got full air control right now. So we are going to bomb them. You give them hell. Put it that way. Going to give them. Right now think about it. We are building quite a decent air force now. We've also maxed the air wings. So I don't want to forget about that. So I'm going to move our troops in. Immediately. Gonna move you here, gonna move you here, gonna move you here, and move you here. Perfect. And if I could, if I want to, and I am going to, I am gonna go for the capital here. There's a total of three cities you need uh, that one, that one, and that one. If you take out all three of those, you have captured all of the Southern Warlord. They've got pretty much similar in infantry than we have, and uh, just, uh, just kind of annoying that infantry versus infantry doesn't go very well. Hmm, World War One, you say? Hmm. Yes, that didn't go very well. Infantry versus infantry. Okay, we are done here. Okay, so now we have two warlords to go for. We are going to go for you. And the next one we are going to go for you. And see as we're attacking two at once, we've got two largest armies, so we're going to move them all into position. And hopefully we should be able to take them out relatively quickly. Okay, next one we're going to go for is Military Affairs Commission, then Army Reform. Army Reform allows us to get rid of our terrible army corruption, losing a massive amount of 50% attack and defense, which is freaking brutal. It is really bad. So in the minute we get rid of that, and the more we, the quicker we get rid of that, the better. For now, we can't get it, but we'll go to war against Japan, and then we'll be able to work on that at a due time. In the north, it's going a lot better. We have Research Radio. Okay. Now we can start working on Mass Assault Doctrine. Now the, the only Doctrine on Mass Assault that we desperately need that will help us in the short term is Defense in Depth. The Extra Org is awesome. We fight longer, we can defend longer. And Max Entrenchment is Extra Defense. So those two are key. But sadly we have to go for Pocket Defense, which is more than likely, in most cases, completely or utterly useless. But you, know, you gotta do it before you get the uh, de Defense in Depth, haven't you? Now we can start working on uh, concentrating industry too, and the fact that we've got some puppets as well. Also, let's just speed things up, which is also good. The Northern Puppet has been annexed, nice and easy. It's also a good idea to keep an eye on Japan. They go for their focuses like this. They go for a li liaison conference 
Greater East Asian Prosperity Sphere, Co Prosperity Sphere, and then Marco Polo in that order. We have a little bit of a hard time to, to get rid of uh, coming. Coming, coming, come, come. No, it doesn't matter, it's gone. Coming, and now it's gone. Oh, look at the humor. Oh, it's like I'm, it's like a, it's like I'm a comedy YouTuber now. Wow. Anyway, so we're going to position our initial troops in the southern bit here. And then we're going to make an attack into Xinjiang now. See, we're, see as we're attacking with this army, I'm going to go for Staff Office plan. And make sure we're prepared to attack. And we are going to attack immediately. For some reason, it gives you the attack focus and the puppet focus. We just go for both of them. It doesn't matter. Oh, and I forgot to bring in my puppet as well, which is annoying. There we go. Now we can attack. And you guys can go. Go, go, go. Okay, we have slightly concentrated too now, so now we can work on unified industrial planning. So that means we can rush concentrated two and concentrated three, which is just insane. That means we can concentrate our industry fully. So you're probably wondering, what do you do about your coastline? Well, it's easy. You just select all your puppets and steal all their divisions. And they have eight divisions, which more than likely will be enough. Select all those divisions. Add them here. And more than likely, we'll select a general who's a defensive doctrine, which will be perfect for holding the coastline. We don't have enough divisions, that's not really a big deal. And in this case, we probably are lacking divisions. So in this case, we are going to recruit a few before the big war happens. In this case, we can recruit a bunch of rubbish infantry. That's right, we can make at least 12 divisions. So we are going to do that. We are going to assign them to this front line. And just for purposes of making it easy for me to see, I'm going to select them as a light blue and defensive with a big keep. Okay, so now they've gone for the Marco Poland bridge incident. So, the way it works in Heart Surviving 4, I think it's luffery, I think it's seven days. If you get an event that pops up that gives you a choice, you can leave it for seven days and then it will automatically select the top option. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're just going to move this over to here. Pretend nobody even saw it. That's right, it's not even there. It's invisible. Ha <laughs> ha! We are going to deploy these divisions on the front line too. Deploy them just a wee bit early, but it's totally okay because a, a weak division is better than no division on the front line. And the Japanese have chose to declare war. Now they are on us straight away. Straight away, Soviet volunteers are the way forward. And we are going to go for a army defense genius. He's not an expert. He's not a specialist. He is a genius. Okay, so I'm going to re just realign these front lines just a little bit. Just to concentrate the east a little bit more than I did before. Just to get everyone in position and get them as uh, organized as possible. Be very careful with AI leaving gaps in the front lines. That's going to cause me problems. Le losing a little bit of the northwest, but that's not a big deal. Looks like the uh, they took Beijing when I had my eyes off it. Yet again, not a complete defeat, not a uh, complete complete loss, but it is annoying to have to deal with a lot wider front line. It means you have to move a lot of divisions around. Got a, a very foolish Japanese division here that seems to have stepped outside his boundaries. It's totally okay because we get a nice free encirclement. Got an option here to go here and here. Would the AI be stupid enough to let me just walk in here? I don't know. You never know. I always say, like, you should take your opportunities. And it looks like the AI is just going to let us walk in and let us have troops in Mongolia. As well as a tank division just sat there in Mongolia while they can get encircled. The fool. Can we get there in time? Oh my goodness, we managed to. Can we? No? Oh, they've just locked us in place here. It looks like, it looks like they secretly know what we're up to. It's like they know our game. And they have. We've managed to do it. I can't even believe it. Wow. Okay, this guy now can go for some absolutely awesome traits. Now, Infantry Expert is nice. But Logistics Wizard is godlike. Literally godlike. This is probably the best trait in the entire game. Logistics Wizard, 20%, is literally a level 2 logistics team. Which is like technology, support equipment. But it gives you it for free! No charge! Free! Uh, but we're not going to go for that one today. We are going to go for... Oh, I think I've selected it several times. We are going to go for Infantry Expert. Remember, we are an expert and we are commanding infantry. So hence, Infantry Expert, right? Come on. Okay, so the next thing you need to need to do is expand the Archimedia. Archimedia? Ah... Uh, Academy. Academica? That one. 70% stability is needed. We are 65%. The easiest thing to do to get more... Uh, Ability is higher. This guy. He's popular and he's a figurehead. Popular figurehead. God, you want the most popular guy? You're going to hire the most popular guy. This is the guy for you, right? 15 stability. Boom. Here we are. Expand. 
Academia Kiki. That one. As always, with most uh, China games, you always forget that you've got army corruption. Oh yeah, I'm playing Wake of the Tiger. Army corruption, that's the thing, right? Okay, so when you've got 100 army XP, you can go for army reform, which reduces the penalty by 70%, which is, yeah, and it takes 90 days to do it. The pain, but it is what it is. Okay, so one thing to keep an eye on is the amount of steel you have. And one of the issues you've got with China is that you do lack raw resources, and uh, steel is one of them. So a 69% penalty for steel is brutal. My advice? Get some steel from the Soviet Union. Not too much, just three will do for now, but that'll reduce the penalty down significantly, down to 8%, which is really going to help for you. I can see our opportunity here, so we can break into here, and we can break into here too, so I'm taking advantage of that. We can also go for the second research slot too. Now my advice when you get your research slots is to work on your guns immediately, and that's going to let you catch up to the Japanese Massively. We pushed into here and we've got a beautiful encirclement. Oh, it's so beautiful. Three fully strength Japanese divisions. That is. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, it's beautiful. The option would be now is to start to integrate your puppets with inside of China. In this case, there's three steps to it. It costs a total of 450 political power in total, so it's not cheap. But it allows you to really quickly annex the puppets within China. And in this case, we're going to go for this one, which is the army, the administration, and then full integration of the puppet. The first step, 90 days to, to integrate their armies. This is making me a little bit nervous, this landing on the very tip, because if they grab that and get a port, it's going to be a problem. But now look to that, 101 days. Okay, they're not breaking that. I think the game's just scaring me with a red bubble. Adaptable, the greatest trait ever. And we can actually go for Improvisation Expert as well. This guy is an insane general. The only thing I would desire of this guy is if he had slightly more attack. He's got a lot of defense, but what the hell. It'll do. It'll do. It'll do. An opportunity to move forward here, so I think I'm going to take that opportunity because capturing this port is actually probably going to be really useful. Pushing that tank division, though, on the other hand, is going to be a bit of a problem, though. We can't pierce the tank and it gains a 50% attack bonus. It is a little bit annoying. It looks like we have managed to break the tank division just by charging it with raw manpower. It, we, what we're aiming for here is to capture this airport. If we can capture this airport here, that's going to be a win for us. And we have. That is beautiful. Now we move our aircraft up here and overall gain more air efficiency. And that means that this area is way more secure than it's ever been. Of course, always keep an eye on army reform. I can't do the final one. There's army reform because I need a total of 100 XP. Um, but we're almost close to integrating fully the Zai Sanma. I think I was right there, actually. Zai Zai Sanma? Well, I think I was close, guys. Holy crap. There is hope for all dyslexics out there. In this case, I think we want to try our best to produce as much artillery as we can. And what we can do, in the meantime, is make a very, very nice division. In this case, we're going to go for Juicy... Artillery Infantry Division. Brilliant. How are we doing right now for Menchuco? We're currently at 89%. Well, looks of things, we're probably not going to be able to make a break on them right now. But if we get a nice encirclement, that would be sweet. So we are going to make a little shuffle in the center here. We should be able to get an encirclement. Look, pushing into mountains. Ha! Mountains? I don't care about mountains. We've got a... Uh, we've got adaptable, guys. Don't worry about mountains when we're adaptable, do we? Boom. Boom. Tank division. It's not really much of a tank division. It's got less than 30% strength. Due to the fact that it's uh, in very low infrastructure areas, which is not a good idea as Japan. I must admit, in the Japanese-Chinese war, to begin with, Chinese are actually in the most advantageous situation due to uh, terrain being absolute shite in China. All right, guys. It is time to launch our glorious attack, even though we don't have an attack order. Ha! Huh. So I'm going to push you guys here. Staff office plan. You guys are going to push onto the capitals of Manchukuo. Manchuko. Okay, boys, this is it. This is the moment. The blue army is ready to attack. And here we go. Always a good idea to try and uh, sneak around the back of them as we move forward, too. Always a good idea. Can we do that? That looks the things we can. 
Oh, they managed to break away, but it's all good. And we managed to sneak into this mountain. Mountain versus horse? Denied. And Menchuko has been destroyed. So at this point, you usually look for spots where you can make encirclements. So this area here is land that we've captured due to the encirclement. So we are going to go here, and you guys are going to go here. And that should create an opportunity to encircle these divisions in the center. We are going to take... At this point, you want to knock out Manchuria. In that case, just grab all those victory points. They've got lots of cities, so you should be able to knock them out pretty easy. And as you notice, the divisions then are floating, so that means you can just wipe them up and clean them up with ease. Create the new front line. Go here. Attack when you're ready, boyos. And the war is over, and Japan has chosen to go for peace. Peace. Pfft. Peace! So, uh, seeing as we've got an opportunity just to eat more of their divisions, just for the laugh, I thought I'd take that opportunity. So remember, the way it works is that if this event pops up on screen, it means that it will select the top one automatically, uh, but it won't select it immediately. So in this case, we've got a little bit of time just to play around with Japan, do cheeky things with them, so I am going to do that. Hopefully get some more divisions out of them. That's the plan, anyway. I haven't got a lot of time here, so I have to be very, very careful. And then they have officially said, we cannot do any more. The war is now over. The reason why I held back and killed the divisions is tried to get their army as small as possible. In my little test run for this, I got them down to four divisions. <laughs> this is something I discovered. If you are a non-aligned nation and you fabricate on another nation to annex them, France and Britain won't guarantee them. What? Discovery of a lifetime, right? Okay, so so what's going on there? So the only way you can fabricate on Korea and Tibet to do the final annexations is if you're over 50% 50 world tension. So at this point, you're going to kind of take a little breather. You're going to lean back in your chair. You're going to chill out, build up your industry, and just relax, you know? Relax. Okay, first of all is Tibet. Full air coverage, launch our initial attack. And we are going to sustain 3,000 casualties, almost 4,000, 4,174 from our end. That was almost a flawless victory. Okay, now we're going to attempt something very special. We are going to attempt to take out Korea with their one division without sustaining a single casualty. It is possible, as I did do it on my rehearsal game. Here we go. So here we go. Attacking Korea. Planned our attack. Here we go. Do I activate makeshift bridges? Is there any rivers I need to care about? How long does it last for? Seven days. If we engage them, then I will. And we are attacking with our main air force, which consists of almost 400 tactical bombers, too. And if we do engage their army, it will be a, like instantly a defeat by them. They uh, they'll deorg immediately. Put it that way. But can we actually get round them? Are we gonna engage? Are we gonna engage? We did engage then. Did we take casualties though? That's the question. Raise it one. Let me see like that. For some bizarre reason, I actually can't get the war screen to load up, and I don't know why. Okay, so I can't even answer that question. How many casualties did we sustain? I don't know. It won't let me select it. The game has bugged. Anyway, regardless, I uh, I managed to invade Korea before, and I, I think I sustained like uh, I dealt like twenty thousand casualties to them in total, and uh, I ended up with zero, just zero. It must mean that when we engage our armies, they are instantly deorged, and then we manage to encircle them and actually do do damage. Remember, if they deorg immediately as well, that tends to mean that uh, they aren't sustaining casualties. They're just instantly just running away and breaking away. And it looks like we brought up the war screen, even though it's already over. Oh, it looks like they were clicking them and keeping them in the in the bank. But anyway, guys, this is it. This is Super China. Look at that. How beautiful is that? 
How glorious is that? So apparently Tibet is a colony, not a core. I don't think there's a way of making it core either. Even when you get down the bottom here of the focus tree, there's not an option to uh, core it. There's an option to invade it, conquer Tibet, but not a way of coring it. But there you go, boys. That is China. So it is currently 1940, and you have a fully unified China. I say fully. The only bit you've not unified, technically, is Macau and Hong Kong. And that one. And also, if you technically want to get really accurate on that, I guess technically this tile as well, because apparently this was contested at some point between India and China. And you do get a claim on this if you follow the National Focus, which follows down to... Where is it? Oh, there you go. So I re-announce the McCannon line. And that gives you a claim on that state, which claims in Hearts of Iron 4 practically mean nothing other than the ability to fabricate a little bit quicker and declare war. Which against the Raj is not a good idea because you're going to be fighting the entire allies. You can see it are doing pretty well right now. And include USA, that will be pretty nasty. Remember guys, this is a super video. I never explained what a super video was, but it's the ability to unify a nation without starting World War II. So in this case, I am currently at war with no one, and I have created a nation that is extremely more powerful than one that existed around this era in the 1940s. So it's 20th of July 1940, we have 156 factories. I always like to go for 100 military factories, civilian factories, that gives us a monster economy. And as you can see too, we do have a lot of resources as well as... Uh, one of the issues I did run into too is for some reason, because we they hold Macau, it won't, won't let us get relations high enough for Britain or France, which I think it might be a bug, because in that case, we could never get relations good enough to focus down the focus tree. But anyway, the Soviet Union is the one I did. You purchase tanks, experimental McKenna's unit, combined arms, then you can renounce the treaty, then you can finally get off free trade, and that means you can have a balanced economy without needing to import lots of materials. One thing to note as well is you only, at the start of the game, only have two naval dot yards. Tell a lie, you only have one. I've got two right now because I captured Korea, and that means you're not going to be getting a lot of convoys. Be aware, if you shift these convoys to the bottom, you're producing none. But if the top, you're producing some. So some better than nothing, put it that way. As I made you aware that I would recommend in this case to switch off your, your infantry production and go for ex excavation, like start doing research, also doing synthetic oil, and that'll allow you to catch up and probably by the end of the game get some heavy tanks rolled out. You have got quite a lot of chromium in the south, so it is usually a good idea to go for uh, heavy tanks, which usually work out quite well. You also got an option as well, is when Japan takes out Indochina, they can declare war on Japan and gobble up all of Indochina. Um, it's a shame for me to say it, but the bottom of this focus tree should do some really interesting cool things, but it actually doesn't. It just gives you options to declare war on a bunch of other nations, gain some extra war support. Option to try and integrate, uh, try to flip over India by giving them more autonomy so they can break away quicker. Maybe it leads on to some, some extra events later on, maybe, I'm not sure, but as I'm aware, that's all it does. It isn't really that interesting and doesn't benefit that much as China, so it doesn't really give you interesting things. So yeah, you've got the option to take out Japan. Around two with Japan, take out Indochina, maybe invade the mainland by doing paratroopers or a naval invasion with a bunch of submarines, maybe. You get air control, you can bomb their, all their ships off the coastline, which will be really sweet. You got another option to invade India, which will put you at war with the Allies, which I would not recommend. And finally, you can invade the Soviet Union with Germany if you want to, and you can like create a Siberian China, which will be a colossally massive China, which would be really freaking sweet. Apart from that, though, guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, click ring a ding ding that bell to be notified of future super videos. If you enjoy super videos, tell me in the comments below. If you reach the end of this video, comment below saying I reached the end of this video. I love super videos, and then I will know. Guys, I hope you have an absolutely epic day, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out, boyos. See you soon.